Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast 2022 Holiday Special, which happens to fall on episode 194. I'm Sean, your host, and here with me live, the Tabletop Bellhop himself, Mo T. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, helping you make your game nights better. We record Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop, and it would be awesome if you joined us here live. So with Christmas hitting in just a couple of days and this episode actually going live after the holiday weekend, we decided to keep things as simple as possible tonight. Well, we could have just as easily canceled the show tonight. Due to the timing, we both ended up free. So figured what better way to celebrate the holidays than spend a night with our fans. So to that end, welcome all you awesome folk who joined us live in the lobby tonight. At this point, though, I can't even tell you exactly what to expect. Uh, for those of you who are here live, probably the same kind of rambling we've been doing for the 20-minute preamble before we got to this point. Uh, except for the fact this is a special episode and we won't be following our normal format at all. That's right. No suggestion box. No formal Ask the Bellhop segment, though I'm sure we will be answering some questions from the chat room. No mm -hmm. formal reviews. And while we'll probably talk a little bit about the games we've been playing, that won't be separated out at the end of the show like usual. Now, I also don't think there'll be any reason to really have an after show, a pento suite at the end of the show, since we're pretty much winging it all night anyway and interacting with the chat as it goes. Absolutely. So this is sort of a mix between an ask us anything, a afternoon brunch, a Sunday brunch, a Sunday brunch. and uh, just a holidays shoot the <laughs> cat. <laughs> shoot, shoot, shoot the should we have put the explicit tag up <laughs> exactly no we want to keep the podcast non-explicit we want to keep our show family friendly those of you in the chat maybe we'll keep an after show just so we can put deanna on the air and she can drop <laughs> all the the bombs we don't <laughs> So what we were talking about before the show went live were our first Kickstarters, which I think is probably a bit worth repeating just because it's kind of interesting. I don't want to, I don't want the whole conversation, but we looked them up and we had the chat room interact a bit with their first Kickstarter. So my first was Mass Transit 2, which was a set of sci-fi maps from Christopher West um, way back in 2011. I backed that. Showed up early, which kind of set me up for a feels good about Kickstarter and want to back more things, um, which eventually it took years after that before one went bad. And uh, I no longer felt quite as safe backing everything that looked cool. Yeah. And uh, my first uh, Kickstarter was uh, actually not a feel good. Um, it was Data Dealer. Uh, yeah. a online video game, which was support us and we'll develop it more. It was all the beta was already out there. Uh, I had played the game and I loved it and I wanted more of it. So I backed it, got some doodads, some stickers and uh, t-shirt and stuff. And uh, other than the stickers and t-shirts and stuff, we got nothing. Because while the game still exists online, you can go to data to go and find it. Uh, just Google data dealers. Um, it hasn't actually changed since 2013 and uh, is still the same game we had then. So in the chat, we've got uh, Will Chamberlain's whose first back was Alien Frontiers. Uh, we got Tech2674, whose first was Quad Heroes. A little later um, for him. <laughs> yes, much, much later than the rest of us. Uh, I get it. Quad Heroes is a good game. I, I wish I had the budget to a backed part two. That was a really cool one. Uh, Ryan's noting he loved Alien Frontiers, but he has a later retail edition. I also backed uh, Alien Frontiers, but not until the fourth printing um which was the one that actually didn't go very well for the company because they went overboard on these um ship shaped dice and that was a bad choice for them thankfully i didn't back at a level that had the dice though my board is technically reversible so that i have slots for the dice but i didn't actually actually uh do those i didn't back at those i technically have one of the dice came that way because it was an expansion it came with both the square die and the ship die Right, yeah, tech, tech saying he put in he put in manual labor to get Quad Hero season two. That was <laughs> there you go. He worked the booth at uh, at, at Gen Con. Con. At Gen Con. No, that's cool. Yeah. So, do you have any character? Yeah, wow, English failed me. <laughs> uh, we were doing good earlier. Now that we're actually recording, I'm going to mess up everything, and all my pronunciations will be wrong. We got all the pronunciations. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> So you backing anything right now? I am. I don't still have? have. I do still have a few. Um, there's actually, well, 
there's quite a few that are still out there, I think. The one I'm hoping that actually does show up, uh, in which case I will have it not for next episode, but the next episode after, is the uh, the sci-fi version of One Deck Dungeon, uh, okay. which is the uh, actually called One Deck Galaxy. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that may have shown up um, by the time, in, within the next, uh, you know, couple of episodes, before the end of the year, anyway, so. Very cool. That's yeah, uh, I, I am not currently crowdfunding anything. I do not crowdfund nearly as much as I used to. Uh, or the budget, plus I, I find a lot of the stuff is available after the fact, cheaper. Um, and now it's got to have some pretty good Kickstarter exclusives before I'll even consider backing it again. Yeah. And then I will admit there was some I was very tempted by this year. <laughs> I did go in on DC deck building. Uh, and while they said December 20 December, none of us really expected that. Um, I expect in maybe a February. Um, they've right. shown they've shown some bits and pieces, so I know they're working on it and it's coming along, but I never actually expected it to show up in December. There. Uh so Red Meeple Ryan's first Kickstarter was Steampunk Rally. Hmm. And Roger and Dodgers then, was the book uh, board game design advice. I want to know. No one I want to pick up. I want to pick up. Um, who does it? Is it Eric Summer, who did the, or it might be Jeff Engelstein, the the big board game book of mechanics. That sounds fantastic. Like we've got our own, um, uh, you know, list of mechanics, but it's not great. I think it's <laughs> Engelstein. Well, we didn't go nearly as deep as that well, book. No, I mean, that like, book is, is a, you know, that's a college-level uh, book. Basically. That's it. It's got a ridiculously long name. Building Blocks of Tabletop Game Design and Encyclopedia of Mechanisms. Oh, Roger will be happy. He used at Mechanisms. <laughs> uh, and that is by Jeff Engelstein. I was correct about that. I had the wrong name at first. Eric Summer is the voice actor. Jeff Engelstein is the game designer. Well, actually, the entire Engelstein family our game designers. Uh, his daughters are now publishing games. Um, and Isaac Shalev. Uh, Will Chamberlain saying he just received Mind MGMT, the best hidden movement game he's played. Nice. Uh, mind management, which would be way more interesting if I'd read the comics, I think. <laughs> comics look cool. Uh, after Sen won, like the amount of awards uh, that Sen was sharing, I'm like, okay, now I'm tempted by this. Plus, I like Sen's games. Right. Yes, Red People Ryan also likes mechanisms. I still say language evolves. Both are applicable. Most people seem to say mechanics nowadays, at least when talking about board games. Yeah, and yes. I, I, don't, I just give up. I, mechanics. <laughs> it's but Mechanics is what comes out of my mouth most of the time because yeah. it's what I'm used to hearing. And maybe that'll be a resolution for next year. <laughs> we'll stop saying mechanics and say mechanisms. I yeah, doubt that happen. one will last. <laughs> it's, that'll, that'll last about as long as a gym membership. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the gym memberships last. It's the actual well, yeah, use getting of out them. of the gym membership is the problem. So, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. This hat may not stay the whole night. It is warm. <laughs> it is very warm. Yes, I know. Mechanics fix cars. Mechanics also make board games playable. It's kind of the same <laughs> thing. And if you tweak them. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. A prisoner figure, like as in the prisoner, as in who is number one? Trader Mechanics break cars. Yes. There is a game called Trader Mechanic, which I have not gotten to play. Awesome. <laughs> I love the prisoner. We have the we have the complete series downstairs. I've always been wanted the there there's a GURPS prisoner. And I've been tempted just because I think that would be a fascinating universe. Oh, I just don't know Gerps. how well it was. Huh? <laughs> except I know. GURPS. That's that's we can't spend all these years making fun of GURPS and then dive in. <laughs> uh, I just want to read it. GURPS yeah, makes right. great source books. Right. First RPG Kickstarter backed. Uh, mm, I think it would be um, Numenera. But again, Deanna backed that and got the Reliquary box. Uh, for mine me was for actually Christmas. Worldwide Wrestling 2nd Edition. That was my first RPG. Nice. That's a rough guy. Did you back the new one? The Worldwide Wrestling, the second, the second yeah. One. yeah, yeah, no, no, the new, new one, the oh, one that's he, live right now. He did, he has, he has another one live. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't even know. It's, it's like the Christmas caper. It's, a, it's a one shot wrestling match between the various um fictional characters to be, see who's the spirit of Halloween. Oh, or Halloween, sorry, spirit Christmas. of the holidays. No, no, I missed that one. I didn't. I don't even think I got. I don't. I how somehow I missed that completely. I even shared it in the Discord. 
I was tempted. It, it's very reasonably priced for a print product, like 15 bucks or something like that. Oh, I shouldn't open the Discord while I'm live. I <laughs> wasn't even thinking. Sorry if my quality suddenly goes to garbage. Let's see. what what I, I should go back through my Kickstarter. If people don't mind waiting, um, I am trying to find Sean a link to this. I would have put it and check it I'll, out. I can pull it up. I can. If I go to World Wide Wrestling, I'll get, <laughs> I'll get Nathan's. Uh, New Year's Fray. That's what it's called. I couldn't remember the name. New Year's Fray 2022. And I will throw that in the chat because Nathan deserves the attention. Absolutely. Low system resources may affect your audio quality. I know I opened Discord. <laughs> I'm well aware. I am now closing Discord. And then actually going to the thing and making sure it's actually closed because now quitting Discord. Yep, there we are. New Year's Fray. Digital. I, I still might. Digital copy is a buck. <laughs> you know, it's community yeah. copy. Yeah. No, no, that, that's that's give a community yeah, copy. Five, like bucks, the, five bucks for digital. And then like 10 for print. for print. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm really tempted at 10 bucks. Plus, like I said, support Nathan. I, I will admit, have you read <laughs> Worldwide Wrestling 2? Uh, I did actually go through. I did did go through it once. I didn't do. I did a. I didn't do a full read. I did a. Right. a you know, speed read of it, um, to familiarize myself with it. But uh, I have not because I haven't had anyone to play with. So yeah. Uh, I, I probably well we had plans. I think we had plans to play it at Breakout Con. Yes. At yes. The beginning of the pandemic. Pandemic. Yep. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I haven't been back to Breakout Con so. All right, I am going to confirm that that was... Well, I won't know when that was, D, because you backed it. Deanna, of course, is Angie Games in the chat room, our wonderful moderator. Oh, it's done. It's done. It finished on the 19th. Oh, it did only it? only a 10-day. Oh, well, turn. I guess I'm not backing it. I guess I'm not it. backing it. <laughs> um, over here, uh, I'm not ready with game. Brian saying it's Dungeon World. Con there you go. No, July. Westward. I forgot about Westward. So yes, the first RPG I backed is Westward, a steampunk Western RPG using the Open 6 system, the Cinema, Cinema 6 system. And I went all in with like metal dice and all this awesome stuff that went with it. Um, got the book. I even hooked up Rob Chope with the designer. So Rob did the art for the game. Oh yeah, And that was part of me getting involved with them. Okay, no, what, is it just that the people's art's now gone? From Kickstarter because I remember this wasn't all text. Because what made me back this was the cover. <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at it and I still have the games downstairs. I did read it. I'll admit I didn't play it. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know how bad screen shares are here. All right, let's let's go to RPG Geek for a second and see if I can find this. Yeah, Westward, I, I'm like, this should be, I really pushed it. It was one of the ones where I'm like, come on, people, you got to back this. Plus, I had played uh, West End game Star Wars near then, which uses the same system. Right. Yeah, that cover doesn't speak to me as much as it did in 2013. But <laughs> so yeah, I saw this and I was like, that looks awesome. There's like a stage coach and there's a giant mecha that's pulling it. And there's like old West hero, but then there's someone that looks like a tinkerer with like cybernetic limbs. And I'm like, that just looks cool. And at the time, of course, Firefly was popular, right? So it was kind of this cyberpunk uh, Firefly old West, but in space, right? The, the frontier planet that you're on right. steampunk Western role-playing. And of course, all the mechs were steam powered, not technology. I just thought that cover was awesome. I'm like, I want to play that game. That's fair. There you go. Yeah, I totally, like, I, I forgot that game, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's downstairs. I have it. I did not run it. That was my first one. Regretzi's Big Book of Fabricated Folk Tales from Finland, that's quite the name, Yeah, was Major Kalis first. There you go. First RPG was Fear Against for Savage Worlds. Yeah, my next one is um is Dungeon World, right? Which I've played. I read the book. I never ran it. I did play. Chris Sneezak ran me through part of uh, what do you call it? The Airy Peaks, I think, is what is his mega dungeon is called. Right. At midnight, at Breakout Con, because he thought he scheduled it for Sunday at noon but instead scheduled it for Sunday at 12. 
And it ends up the con ran late enough that it was actually a Sunday, Saturday night game, which I almost missed if I wasn't actually hanging out with Chris at the time. And I wasn't there when he realized it went, wow. Okay. I guess we're staying up late tonight (laughs) because we have a four hour session of dungeon world that starts at midnight Oof. on a con at a con. So yeah, that might've been, or no, that was origins. Yeah, that was Origins. That wasn't even Breakout. Okay. October 2014 was Feng Shui 2. Numenera was 2013. See, I thought Numenera was older. Mm. Yeah, then my, right. my second RPG was uh, the the Galaxy, um, uh, which I still haven't played, for the Forged in the Dark Supers. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. System. Galaxy in Peril. Galaxies in Peril. I still have something tickling my nose and it's going to bug me all damn night. It's probably stuck in my glasses somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I know we were talking about, we were going to talk about what games are on our Christmas wish list. Uh, and for yeah. me, it's getting that uh, one deck galaxy um, and getting that to the table. That's, that's, that's really, I mean, I, ideally the wish list would include uh, the, the DC deck builder, but I, I don't like, I actually expect it's that not going to show up so, in time. Yeah. It's not going to be here. All right, this is driving me nuts. My nose is so itchy. <laughs> I think it's beard. I think it's mask beard because I did have a mask on for most of today. Right. Uh, my daughter had a, a concert and wow, aren't grade school concerts fun? <laughs> <laughs> That's grade school concerts with no light. Couldn't even see her. Oh, yeah, I hate that. Uh, they, they had like no lighting and yeah. We literally couldn't find her. I was using my camera because my camera adjusts to low light better in my eyes. So I'm like <laughs> using the camera zoomed in. Yeah, that was, I, I have a recording. I could play it for everyone, but I don't think you want to hear that. That said, one of my children's friends was a fantastic singer who has applied to Walkerville for singing. And I am certain they will get in because... She was, they, sorry, were the best performer of the entire show. What was I looking up? What was I doing? Oh, that Christmas list. I want to see what I actually put on it. But everyone buy themselves as Christmas gifts, nothing. I, I tend to not buy myself games. All, all my games are my are by myself, so <laughs> if yeah. I play a game, I bought it myself. All right, here's what I actually put on my Christmas list. Um, Quaxa Quedlinburg, the Alchemist expansion. Yeah, that would be awesome. I I love Quax. I just never picked it up. It's not someone we work with, so it's not something I'd expect a review copy. So yes, want the Alchemist expansion for Quax. Uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom, because everyone keeps saying that's the best of the X of the direction of the compass Y games, which I still my favorite still so far is Raiders of the North Sea. But everyone tells me Paladins of the West Kingdom is is the best of those series so that's on my list um i also speaking of the fact that i like raiders i don't have the fields of fame expansion so that's on my list and you'll know a lot of these are like expansion for games i have and then the next big chunk would be all the scythe expansions right because i we enjoyed scythe way more than i thought i would and yes we work with stonemeyer games and yes i possibly could get these but i would rather get full games from stonemeyer to review rather than cheap little expansions that are more affordable um rpg wise i still want star trek adventures all based on one game sean came down to windsor to play (laughs) with the original fasa star trek and how much fun i had with that right and i gotta say the new one looks fantastic so um Um, the other one is the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition Core Rulebook because I read that starter set and I'm like, yep, this is Warhammer. This is what I want from Warhammer. <coughs> um, we got, uh, what do you got? Oh, Roger Dodger. Uh, Eclipse, second Dawn of the, Ga- Dawn of the Galaxy oh, from so Me to Me. Good. That is such a good game. So that is good. definitely worth getting yourself something. That that was that one he picked up, or is that one he wants? I know he says from me to me. So, all right, we got we got some chats. Got a bunch here. So, 
Numenera was this. One Deck Galaxy. Ryan wants to know about it. Uh, Will Chamberlain, I think this is the Christmas lit wish list, is Arc Nova Heat Pedal to the Metal. I have heard great things about both. Arc Nova currently is dirt cheap at GameNerds.com, though I know that's in the States. I believe that is both his wish list and his uh, buy for himself list. Okay, there you go. Same list. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, Zombicide Dice and Catch the Moon. That's awesome. Tech. Pick those up. Uh, Zombicide Dice I haven't played. I played Zombie. Oh, yeah. Zombie, zombie Dice. dice Sorry. Not zombicide. No, my mouse was over top of it, and there was a <laughs> stupid pin blocking it. It looked like Zombie Dice I have had fun with. I'm, I'm not a huge you know, Yahtzee fan type of game, but that one in particular, I had a lot of fun with catch the moon is so neat. I, that there tech has a, a game. I really want to play need to bring that out. The next time we're at the barbershop bar and I'll finally get to try catch the moon and try not to make the moon cry. It's <laughs> like of all the themes in a game, like you're building a ladder to get up the moon. And if you fail, the moon cries and you right. get little cry tokens. Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. That's a we need to put together a game night and play something like play a six player. I think it plays six. Maybe uh, it plays eight. I think it's six. Sorry, play a full six that. player game. Uh, yeah, it's waiting for it's right. It's waiting for him. Uh, so. Nice. Oh, the Road to Canterbury. I'm aware of that game. I don't I haven't yep. played it. I have not played it. I have not played it, but I have heard of it. Roger got that. Um, I technically got uh marvel champions back there though i already had it it's a replacement copy of marvel champions that i do have to thank deanna for picking up um it's back there because it's sealed so i figure i may as well do an unboxing video because that's go. what we do with everything um oh will chamberlain needs to play the clips as well have you played second dawn yet or have you only played uh your original version because i you're the one that taught me eclipse back in the day <laughs> which I then rushed out and bought and then bought the the different ships for. And then the, the Ancients expansion, I had all of that going. And I sold all of them for <laughs> in to get the money to back the new one. And it actually worked out to almost the same. King Con, interesting. I think that's, yeah, yeah. that's his local con that's starting local up con. again post-pandemic. Nice. Second oh, on yeah, all, all in. Yeah, in, I did the all same. Kickstarter, yeah, yeah. I did the same. and And it was worth it. Totally although although it. man was putting uh, that sorting it. Yes. Sorting oh my it god! Something else. It was what six hours? Oh, both like of that. us working yeah. on it. That was. That Anna's was got pictures that vanished off her phone that I so planned to share on social media because it was just like baggies. Because my original copy was all baggied, and I had a couple plano in there, but not nearly enough. I only had plano for the tech tiles, um, and, or sorry, not the tech tiles, the the upgrades, the ship upgrades. The tech tiles were all in a bag. But man, the, the the table at that time and the number of baggies and trying to figure out what went where. Yeah, that was crazy. Running uh, gag in February. I've heard of that one though. Mm -hmm. I have heard of running gag. Small college con. Oh, we're still in the check in. Well, yeah, we keep it in the check in. Okay. Sure. All right. I wasn't sure what you were going to go switch somewhere, it to. We can go somewhere else after. <laughs> Just uh, after wander. Coffee, you know. <laughs> wander. Oh. Uh. Us, puzzlement on our faces oh yes while we were trying to sort it out <laughs> yeah there was just so much and they were it was there was, was stuff that was like just a little bit different enough and they were like well where do these actually go well the and, weird part was if they did a great job of separating out the expansions but it meant you couldn't just like sort everything yeah. right like you couldn't just oh let's put all the tech tiles together like oh no wait the whatever i don't even broken covenant expansion goes here and the yeah. follow whatever goes here this shows how much i i have not played any of the expansions and any of the eclipse even though i own them all um so i can't say much even the original like when i I, you remember this because this i bought the upgrade like i went uh, uh, oh no i'm thinking of an acrony i'm getting an acrony confused with eclipse sorry that's that's <laughs> my bad it was an acrony that was the one that was all over the place wasn't it eclipse deanna and i did yeah we were getting sorry we're getting confused between the anachrony infinity box and the eclipse second on eclipse second on uh, deanna yes. and i did Right. And I was like, I'm going to do this before I go to bed. And it was like three hours later, and it was frustrating. Yes, we, we were getting those two mixed up. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the night of our anniversary. That's what it was. I'm like, we're going to sort this. Yeah, uh, yeah I was. Uh, uh, no, there was nowhere to put the stupid stands. 
That's what I remember being extremely frustrated by. <laughs> there was no good spot to put the stands. You're going to give me like awesome box inserts and stuff. And like the box inserts are like you did this. What do you call that? Com- whatever company does all of the game trays. Yeah. Yeah. Game they trays. did all the game trays and there still wasn't room for everything. Yeah. That's if yes. you're going to go out to the trouble of putting game trays in your, in your Kickstarter, get like, get it everything. Make get it right. For everything. <laughs> yes. Um, especially yeah. now when some games are coming non kickstarter like standard with game train mm-hmm. level stuff yeah and kind and doing it right uh will chamber noted uh got the boy all the x-men marvel champion stuff most played game this year nice good oh, to wow. hear tori yeah, and cat trying that yeah tori and cat went all in on the previous one like the the standard marvel one so they have like 80 boxes worth of stuff <laughs> and they keep threatening to bring it like it's a threat and i'm like no bring it we'll play it some night he's like seriously i'm like yeah but then they have their friend dan painting everything so now he's like i can't bring it over unless it's painted i'm like come on he's like yeah but you're gonna take pictures <laughs> i'm like all right fine i want to try i've not played it I, i've heard it's fairly simple but that doesn't necessarily mean bad yep nope absolutely. even from someone who like got weather machine which is awesome <laughs> wandering the hotel tonight us yeah we don't know what oh, we're yeah in. <laughs> yeah we're all over the place go to the 13th floor and review well we that's what we should have did with the racco review oh, we geez. should have broke out the 13th floor wow yeah we haven't used the 13th floor in a long time so ryan's asking is there a game you received for christmas last year you have yet to play um hmm anything rpg for me but <laughs> i i have stuff on the pile of shame that's definitely way older than a year was but I, I don't think there was think anything so. from Christmas last year that didn't get played. I think that, no, I'm pretty I think good. everything but, Christmas wife got played. We we got uh, you know my wish list is pretty subject like like succinct. It's stuff that I really want. Yeah. Um. So last year I think was Quacks of Quedenburg, Space Base. Um. Which definitely both those got played. Oh, yeah. Lost Ruins of Arnak and Dune Imperium. So yeah, all and that got all played. of those got played. Um. Deanna might remember if there was more. I remember what else sent me a photo on Facebook. Let me go over to Facebook here. <laughs> oh, I hate do it this way. I'm not screen sharing. What am I worried about? Yeah, don't worry about it. All good. I thought we didn't have a picture of that. All right, here you go. This is great. So, yeah, sorry, we were thinking anachrony, the anachrony infinity box. Like, look at this. Yeah, <laughs> like, just trying to figure out what went where, and, and it would have been nice to have. Table, and... It would have been nice to have two copies of that book. Mohead is in his hands. Yes, because that was the one that helped. Well, you there was explain... even a, the fact there was a book that explained what went where. <laughs> yeah, when 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 one of your manuals is just how to sort the game. Yes, though I gotta say, more games that have trays like that should have such a manual that tells you where to put things there is that yeah tech text one uh, wish this year is a tabletop bellhop mug <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i don't know i i we have no excuse anymore we we suck that's all <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no excuse uh, okay where where did my twitch window I go by the uh the barbershop today so i know where it is now there you go. I noticed as I'm as I'm driving back to the the highway, I'm like, oh, I know what. The, <laughs> I should probably stop there because my hair desperately needs it. But it that, was eleven o'clock. It's way too early for a beer with a haircut. There yeah. you go. You could just get a haircut. There. I know. No, and they were open. I was like, are they actually open this early in the morning? Because it really is early for beer and a haircut. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think you can serve after eleven. Isn't that what the legally it is? Yeah, and some days you can so. do it earlier. I think something so. like that. I'm not a morning drinker, but uh, so yeah, I I can't think of anything I got for Christmas last year. I haven't played. Did I get any? If it, if I got RPGs, then no, I I didn't play them. But I don't think I did. No, I don't. I don't. I'll admit I don't get a lot of games nowadays because I get a lot of games throughout the year. I <laughs> you right. Yep. Usually it's it's stuff that you know came out a couple a few years ago that we're not yeah, going to be able older to review. Stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's you know even Arnac was you know two or three years. Yeah, with, and and yep. same with Dune. Dune and Ardak were both 2019 games yep. that I got in 2021, right? So, yeah, I think I played them all. I I can't think of any I uh, I I missed. I don't know if I have a list. Like, I could. Is there a way to like sort Board Game Geek for when it was added to your collection? Then I could probably figure it out for sure. 
but I'm not sure if that functionality is there. Yeah, I don't know. I do not remember. So those were those were the games specifically on my Xbox Switch list. If if like money was no object and you know I was rich, I honestly can't think of anything else that. If there's a few out there, if there's uh, the guy that did Zaya Legends of a Drift system did that fantasy one. I have no idea if that's out, but like with the miniatures with the swappable oh, yeah. heads and yeah, everything. Yeah. I can't remember the name of that one, but that would be on my wish list. <laughs> um, honestly, at this point, they're basically Kickstarters that I kind of wanted, but weren't didn't quite have enough, but I still kind of wish I got. Right. It's probably what I'd like. Um, King's Dilemma sounds fascinating, but I it, it's we're just now getting back to gaming with other people. So now it feels more appropriate. It wasn't something I wanted to play with Torian Cat. Nothing against Torian Cat, but we have enough legacy games to play right now. I didn't need a new one. Um, so King's Dilemma was up there. Um, I want to try Cubitos because I've heard really good things. Is that um, uh, Aridia, The Paths We Dare Tread? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, Far Off Games, I think it's the public. Yep, Far Off Games. Yep. Um, Cubitos looked pretty good. Um, Calico, I've been hearing really good things. The new Azul, like I can't, I kind of can't believe we haven't played the new Azul. Oh, but I know. We're not going out to game stores. Like we're not, that that's that probably should have went on my Christmas list. It wasn't, but it probably should have been on there. Azul Queen's Garden. Um, Bees, for also from Plan B Games, is another one I would love to pick up. I feel like I should I, play so Splendor Pax Duel. Got Cascadia, huh? <laughs> I feel like I should play Splendor Duel. I, I honestly, I wouldn't mind trying that. That might be a perfect date night game for DNI. Do you like Splendor more than I do, but we both enjoy it. Yeah, so Pax got Cascadia for the oldest under the tree right now. No, Cascadia, like I said, Cascadia is another one. I've been hearing really good things. I would love to try out. There's just too much to play. Like, like I yeah, I don't know how much you can see. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, there's Dolce, still in Trinx. There's a pile of Valeria games here, four of them. Expansion for Horizon Zero Dawn. And big news. Here's here. Do, 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 breaking news. Um, Adventuria now available in North America again. And they would like to work with us for their new Kickstarter coming next year. Um, and they have offered to send us their new campaign mode of play to check out and review. Plus, they would love it if we would produce more Adventuria content because they want to be able to link it all in their Kickstarter. So, yes, Adventuria is back. Um, what I learned, though, is you can buy it from Studio 2, but don't. You want to buy it from the F shop at UlyssesSpiel.com, which I, I could probably grab a link. They have everything. You can get... This included, yeah, the, the oh, no. poltergeist. Oh, this isn't it. But the the master Astro- Taylor's poltergeist demo kit, which we were like, you gotta get the demo. Learn kit. how to play, yeah. If you learn buy, how to play, it is learn amazing. How to play the demo kit. You can get the demo kit. You can get all the promos. Uh, one of my things, like in the new year, we need to go back and go to all our reviews and update the links because they're not good anymore. Right. Uh, Zool master trucks here, I do not need because it's Azul and it looks different. I don't, I don't need a different looking <laughs> version of Azul. Um, another thing to know, Plan B Games is going out of business. If you do want any promos for their games, go to their website right now. Um, you can get like the the Joker tiles for Azul, the Deluxe tiles for Azul, the B token for Bs and so on. So who's physically located in Canada? Is it Azul? Like a Plan B? Or plan B canon? I don't I don't know what he's responding to. Oh, oh no, uh, from, yeah. Plan B. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, no, plan B. Yeah. So Azul and all that. Yeah. So check out Plan B games if you want promos. I gotta admit I love the Joker tiles. They're just a wild card, you know, but they, they, they can be put anywhere, but they also have to follow the rules. I like them. They're a neat addition. It just it makes a, a game that's already good give you a little bit of a twist. Um so yeah, Plan B games. You go there now. Prices are U.S., but ships from Canada. No duty for Canucks. Anna says, and nice. I, and it's literally a sale until everything runs out because they're they're closing down. Yep. I don't know. Maybe they got bought out for the third time. I think they might have. Asmodee might have bought out them out. Like the reason they're called Plan B is because they got bought out by Asmodee, and the woman relaunched a new company and called it Plan B because well, well, my first company didn't work. It got bought out by Asmodee, and I think this one did as well. So Although to be fair, some. People consider that working perfectly. <laughs> yes, exactly. And people were joking if we we're going to see like Plan C games and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Now, oh, that's right. Sorry. It, that's right. It's three times. Yeah. So yes, they got bought out, and then they opened up Next Move Games, 
And then they got bought out. Next Move Games got bought out and became Plan B Games. And this would have been the third time they were bought out or something. It's, it's ridiculous. I, <laughs> I got to say, anyone who wants to be a publisher, I think your goal should be just get bought out by Asmodee and then start a new company. Well, I don't think you have much choice these days. If you're successful, <laughs> you're going to get bought out by Asmodee. Yeah, it seems like it's um, Stronghold somehow hasn't, though. And like when Bonacore was in charge, he was like begging him, like, come on, Asmodee, I'm right here. I want to retire. He then did retire because he was doing well enough on his own. But like that was his retirement plan was get the company popular enough. I right. guess people really didn't like the thin cards and shipping resources and terraforming Mars. Yeah, you can do worse than the Asmodee money. Absolutely, yeah, Ryan. Exactly. But like, let him have you go do your own thing. Do it again. Mm-hmm. Next move. Right. Plan B. Plan C. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of some of the, like, this is not a, you know, recap of the year, but I'm just trying to think of the games I see people talking about that I get a little jealous of that we didn't get to try. But yeah, I mean, you uh, could say Frosthaven, except you didn't play Gloom and Jaws fully. So no. why go to, fly, why go to Frost? Why oh. not play Frosthaven as well? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. That goes. I did not back Frosthaven. I may regret that eventually. But one of the problems is if we get back into playing Gloomhaven, that's all we play. And I don't want to get to a point where it's the only thing I play. Back when we played Gloomhaven, it was before the pandemic, and I had two regular game nights. One was for Gloomhaven, and one was another one. Plus, I was running public play events on the weekend. So really, I had three game nights a week, which is two chances to play games off the pile of shame and the pile of obligation, and a night to stream Gloomhaven, which we were enjoying. Right. And I don't have those other two now. Like, yes, we did an event at the Barbershop Bar. There'll be another one in January. But once a month does not make up with being able to play new games every Friday. And Gloomhaven, I mean, it, I don't know how, how much people do, but it was setting up, you know, so you'd set it up for like half an hour before the stream. Yes. Play through the stream. And then there was another half hour, almost 45 minutes to clean it all up and, and put Sometimes. it away. So you can't really play two games unless you have a separate table for a second game. Yeah, like you, yeah, you, you, you have to, you can't play it at the same time, really. Yeah. Like you, I technically my table's big enough. We probably could have did half and half and left Gloomhaven set up on one half. But all things, even leaving it set up doesn't help because so much changes between one scenario and the next. Yeah, like what are you gonna keep out? Oh, we happen to reuse that one map tile in this one rock. <laughs> okay, everything else has to change anyway. Yeah, but reboxing is is time consuming. Yeah. So you're still and that's with some. a that's with a box insert too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still, we got to add that, I think, as a bellhop law. I think it's been proven now. Don't buy box inserts because you'll never play your games again. <laughs> like, it's so bad. You're, except you, we, we keep getting content from a box from box insert people, so maybe we shouldn't say that. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, I don't, we haven't had anything new from box insert people in a while. Hold this face, I tend, we tend to play those games, but not even them. I don't know what it is. It's like the curse. You're like, <laughs> this is going to make this game easier to get to the table. Well, then never again. <laughs> it, it totally defeats our what was that like episode two insert tab a was the name of the episode where we yeah. talked about box inserts and the whole point was if it gets it to the table more often it's totally worth it yep right. I don't Ryan's know, saying I, he makes his own so it doesn't happen to him fair so you got any non-games on your wish list uh no not really no <laughs> I, 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 between between the move and the car and everything else yeah. uh the holidays just kind of moved on for me <laughs> See, it, it, Will Chamberlain's true. I got early on box insert for last year for Christmas. I haven't gotten into the table again this year. And Tech is saying he got the Tech, uh, I need Tiny Towns, Towns insert yep. from Folded Space. Haven't played it since. I don't know what it is. Like, why? Why is this a thing? Yeah, well, it's because you spent so much time staring at it and putting it away and getting it. It feels like you played it t- a ton of times when you actually didn't. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of which, anyone in Windsor has Fields of Arl. I got a free box insert for you right here. Full this space. Here's a chunk of it. The rest is piled up here. But you got to make sure you have the right size box. You can have it free of charge if you've got fields of arrow. Because what am I going to do with these bunch of trade? Like technically, I thought about like taking these and throwing these in other games, but like they're really made to fit together. Yep. It's a nice insert if you have the right box. Yes. Like honestly, out of all of them, I'd probably keep this because you know that's like a nice tray for dividing up cards and stuff. Yeah. Everyone I know in Windsor, I've already asked, doesn't have it. So if you happen to be in Windsor and you're listening to this at any point, reach out, let me know. You can have it. We'll we'll have to measure it, figure out which one I got and which one it fits. You can have it for free. There you go. I don't I don't I don't know. 
other geeky thing i don't i don't even know i i could use some new headphones but i don't think i even put those on the christmas list there's video games i i want some video games i would love actually a next gen system <laughs> um i th- would be leaning towards the playstation 5 over the xbox series 1x or whatever the newest xbox is yeah, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really gaming much other than on the PC, and the PC's still rocking away. So, I, I've got Marvel, and I spent money on Marvel uh, Midnight Suns. So that's right. that's the one I'm playing for a while now until until Hades say, Two comes out. Well, until Hades, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I have to say though, I you know what I, I I'm a little disappointed in Marvel Suns. Um, it's it's a fun game. Like there there it, there's a little bit of um sort of a a um positional thing like you actually where you stand in the battle actually matters but it is a deck builder um where you're playing three different characters each with eight cards um and that's it um right. but at the same time parts of the graphics are kind of meh and mm. the, it, it feels like a slog like between the actual battles there's so much story and adventuring and collecting going on that it just feels like almost a bit too much of a slog for me to load up Ooh. and play uh, because I know even just to get through a single day, all the little places I have to go check and stuff I have to check up on and restart this and research this and do all this. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot to do. <laughs> wow. Um, See, and I thought that was supposed to be a lighter game, like more of a pop it on, play for a bit, stop. Yeah, no, that's I, so when I do that, I, I play Marvel snap if I want to, although I have to yeah. say, I've gotten to a <laughs> point saw. in Marvel Snap today where I, I am that. upset. If literally I am at the point now where if someone drops Wong on the table, I, I immediately retreat. just walk away. I retreat. I, I will not play if Wong is on the table. Um, and I have no idea when I get to him. Maybe like when I get him, I'll probably put him in my deck and I'll probably be that same jerk because <laughs> why not? I mean, it's literally like at one point someone dropped dropped Wong and dropped somebody else and immediately got two locations up to 58 Jeez. with a two card combo. Wow. Like, yeah. I, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm done. I, I can't. Yeah. So, uh, luckily not too many people have him. So it's, I, I don't even know where on the list he shows up. Um, oh, for all so, you know, it's a random or it was a one month only thing or, no, I, th- you I think it's in the or... list. I think it, I, yeah. don't, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a pay to play. Uh, most of the pay to play stuff is all just graphical garbage. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Audible Games Annual got... Sub is the big. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, we got a bunch a in, the, in the chat is a, here. Audible, Audible is an expensive one. I gotta say. So Pax points out instead of uh, getting box sensors after the fact, she tends to back Kickstarters that come with them. Fair. Those we tend to play. It's not like I, you know, we we played my Anachrony twice now. That's not a ton, but that's a big epic game, and and yep. not something we've been playing with Tori and Cat. Um, Tax same played more board games online than in person. Well, we've definitely done the same thing as well. We only tend to talk about the the in person games most of the time, the physical games, but we although, still. De- although I have to say, my like my board game arena plays are way down. I used to have yeah. like eleven to fourteen games going on at once. Uh, I'm down to six or seven um, at a time. It's really kind of uh, tapered off. Um, I haven't I haven't played on Board Game Arena in a while. I've just been busy. There's lots going on. Lots going on. I'm happy enough to get some physical plays in now and then. I haven't even played video games lately. Like I, I pop, popped Hades back on a bit there during Black Friday just to, as a good time killer. And I'm finally down to like, according to the, the book, there's one last thing I need to do. The, the prophecies I need to, to defeat um, Sharon twice. Right. But then I still have a bunch of stuff in the, the other book where you just, you know, yeah, yeah. catch but, five of this fish and go to this location 23 times. I have a bunch of those. Yeah, we, 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 were, we all paid attention when Hades 2 was announced at the yeah. Awards. Everyone we'll see. got excited. We'll see if, it's, if, if, if it can, you know. It will. It will. Honestly, I don't. Lightning I, strike twice. That developer, I think, and from the sounds of what they've got planned, I think it will be just as good. Yeah. I got to say that one looks good. Um, Pax got their college freshmen a Switch Lite so they can play Splatoon 3 in Hades between visits home. Nice. Uh, my kids have Splatoon 3 on their wish list and play with their aunt. Uh, Red Meeple Ryan, non-gaming stuff. Mike Floor Stand in AV Cabinet because he wants to start streaming. Yep. Um, 
other ones I got. So like I, I have Xbox One games. So Star Wars stuff that came out that I missed, like Squadrons and Jedi Fallen Order. Again, I like I'm not into new hotness. I think I'll play old games. Um, Middle Earth Shadow of War because I finished Shadow of Mordor and I want to play part two. Uh, the Outer Worlds, which everyone went nuts for for a while, but doesn't I don't know if maybe I should wait because I don't hear much about it anymore. I, I had it on my list. I almost pulled the trigger on it once when it went on sale and I'm like, I, I, know, I still hear really like, good things about it. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, we picked up, uh, well, did you pick up, uh, squadrons from Epic or no? Cause you want it on console. No, cause I want it on console. Right. I, I did, but it's, it's installed. I just, I don't play games on my PC. I don't know if that, that might change. <laughs> like once we start actually like the PCs downstairs, the other PCs downstairs and we're right. streaming from downstairs and stuff. I don't know if I'll play down there, but I think I might play more up here because I'll spend more time downstairs. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I, Diablo 3 for the Switch is still on my wish list. I just didn't bother taking it off from last year. I don't know. I got a couple Super Smash Bros, but uh, the kids got that. So <laughs> they uh, they got that for uh, doing some good stuff and, and you know, being good. Not a non-Christmas gift that is sitting downstairs. Of course, they haven't been good with cleaning, so it's still <laughs> sealed, but they physically have the game downstairs. Yeah, I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Diablo 4, except at the same time, I haven't been playing any Diablo or any Blizzard content at all because, well, Blizzard are kind of idiots, yeah. except Microsoft is supposed to buy them, but now they're being sued, so they may not be able to buy them because the mm. FTC is stepping in. So oh, geez. that's such a pain. I'm like, Sean in Windsor is an ex- is a Christmas gift for all of us. Aww. There you go. Um if if only if only the stress to get me here hadn't uh, there you go the, the, the <laughs> gift we got the the gift we got for ourselves our new vehicles but neither of us for, by choice <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's that's the other thing that happened yeah um what else we got uh, are you getting your kids any games uh no not I we're not uh, they've got a bunch of stuff but they don't really play it without me so right you know it's it's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, not this year. I I was shocked. I had to think about it. I'm like, did we get the kids any board games this year? I'm like, no, yeah. not really. But to be honest, I, like we don't play a lot of games with the kids. We play on Sundays at, at Mims, but it's just the kids when they're here have their own things to do. My daughter is very active on um what is it? Uh programming scratch. She's very active on scratch. They're both really into crafting. Um, Genevieve right now is just obsessed with reading everything she can get her hands on. And I'm like, yes, if I say, hey, you guys want to play a game, they'll go down and we'll play a couple of games. Like we played a bunch of mountains out of mole hills and stuff like that. But it's not like like being all gamers in the same house doesn't mean we game together all the time, right? Yep. Now, what is happening is my oldest daughter, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, has started up a board game club at Walkerville and is now every Friday stealing my games and bringing them to share with her friends at school. Though she is really fighting with getting anyone to play anything other than Monopoly and headbands. And I honestly, like even being the tabletop bellhop, I'm like, I don't have an answer for this. Like, like, I don't <laughs> know how you get them. Like if they're having fun, great. I don't know. I don't how you know get anyone how... to play Monopoly in half an hour. They do it though. They get 23 kids out and like 16 of them will play headbands together. And the rest are all playing various, like multiple copies of Monopoly and somehow having fun. And I'm like, I don't know how to fix that. It's not in my wheelhouse well, of thing experience. Is they're having fun. That's the problem. Yeah, like, like, yes. Do you need to fix it if they're having fun? Well, yeah, that's part of it. Right. And I'm like, I don't know. Just keep bringing more and more interesting games and the people you're playing with will hopefully get happy, you know, and loud. And people will be like, oh, what are you doing over there? And maybe it'll eventually catch their interest. But what she's been really leaning towards is the party games, which sadly we don't have a lot of because it's not really what we love. Hamster right? roll. Like we need hamster roll. Oh, hamster roll is a good call. Yeah, that's a good one. And I'd say Riff Rap, but she'll never be able to assemble the boat. God, no, no. <laughs> pitch Don't. car or something. Yeah, pitch car you can play in half an hour. Can make it small. I hadn't thought of the dexterity games. That's that might be my next suggestion for, go for her. the go for the table presence, right? Get, yeah. get hook them in, hook them in with stuff that looks like cool. she's like, I so want to play villainous. And I'm like, Yeah, villainous is is a like a big step above where these people currently are. How mm. about you bring hues and cues? I yeah. guess Ven has been fairly popular so oh, that's far. Cool. Rhino Hero, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. They, she won't bring Rhino Hero. So the other problem is, these are teenagers. They are artistic teenagers at an art school, and they don't want to play kids' games. They met Tori and Cat. Like I, Tori's favorite game in the world is Rhino I, Hero. Yeah, I know. That's the <laughs> other one. He hasn't brought over Super Battle yet. 
Oh, you're supposed yeah. to bring that over sometime. So yeah, I it, so I we are not getting uh, video games. Yes, they they have a few video games they are getting, but no actual board games this year. And the other thing is, we got them games last year, and we still haven't even cracked one out of the shrink. So they are talking about people who got games. No, Cuckoo is a kids game. Looks like a kids game. It can't look like a kids game. She won't even bring Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters because there's kids on the front cover. Like no one will play this. Dad. The Ghost Betwixt um, has kids on the cover. <laughs> yeah bring that instead um so yeah I, I, and i'm like i should be able to help them with this but like she doesn't want to bring any of the games i think will work because they're too kitty like magic labyrinth with the marm bowl underneath the magnet like that's such a neat game yeah it's simple but like compared to headbands <laughs> it's actually kind of a step up too bad you still didn't have uh the the um the chaos dice game the cthulhu um yeah that would be a good one actually cthulhu kerplunk yeah plunk meets yahtzee <laughs> where where the fun part of the game only happens if you play badly. <laughs> uh so Will Chamberlain's list, this is a good one for the for for his kids. That, that I, we can be, I want to be his kids. I want <laughs> most of these games. Marvel Champions decks, which is again my my copies right there. Um Summoner Wars decks, I'm assuming second edition Summoner Wars. I tend to play the app, but I do dig the game. Micro Macro Crime City. There's one that should have been on my wish list that I kind of forgot about. It's supposed to be amazing. It's like just this giant map with lots going on that reminds me of like, you know, old Mad Magazine, Sergio Argonez, like super busy, lots of like grew comics, like where there's just stuff happening everywhere. Yep. But like it's that, but there's a game involved where it's like, you know, find find the bakery and you find it and you're like, okay, follow the person walking and you'll find them on the map and you eventually solve problems. That game looks awesome. Um, Disney Villainous Expansions, uh, my oldest daughter would love more Villainous. Uh, the problem is the rest of us don't love it. So, Pax is saying other games under the tree are Dominion and that they've never played. Nothing wrong with that. It's the first no. time for everybody. Uh, Wingspan Africa expansion. They're a big Wingspan family. We've heard that yes, many times. we know that. And Network's two-player version, the Rival Networks. Uh, Networks was good. Which That's one of those so games good, that we never play it, disappe- it. it disappeared in the mix. Like yeah. we, we brought it back from a con. You guys taught me because you and Deanna had, were the ones who had played it because you got it in the taken what a play and take. But yeah, it, it was you wrote every, win. Time, every time you wrote every time you play a game, you wrote your name down and uh, they gave them away. Yeah, which is an awesome event. Awesome event. Yeah. Um. Yeah, wings. I, I, we've now played Wingspan on Board Game Arena, and it didn't. I, I think I need to play in person because something just didn't. Or make at least sense. real time. Yeah, or play it real time. Maybe it'll oh, make more Clank sense. Catacombs. That look good. I want Clank Legacy. That should have been on my list. I want to do Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. So again, I don't need another Legacy game. <laughs> like I bought the recharge pack for Charterstone. Am I ever going to use that? I feel guilty for buying that now. I'm <laughs> like, damn it, why did we buy that? When are we going to actually play through Charterstone a second time? So we did enjoy it, and I wanted to at the time. Like at the time, it was like strike. Well, uh, we we should have played like that weekend. Started up. Like Sean's here now. We'd have five charters. It'd right. be perfect. We're actually we're hurting for five player again. That's that's the one not a disadvantage of Sean being <laughs> down. But like if he comes over Friday night, nothing like zero games in my pile of obligation are five player. I'm like I looked. I'm like damn it, they're all four player. Well, we need to see. We need to get the show notes done early, and then do a Tuesday night gaming where I come over. Well, yeah, and or Tuesday Friday. or Thursday or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I really we need to get back to gaming more often. Yeah. Which, <laughs> like, sound? Oh, we have the game more often. No, <laughs> it's not like that. It's a bit of both. Yeah, Clank Catacombs look good. It it does look good. Yep. I I haven't played Clank. I just Clank expansions. I tend to. I'm always moving on to the new game now, right? Which I think is part of being a content creator you kind of we don't necessarily keep up with the new hotness but like there's always something new to move on to there's always the next review clank and, was and, one of the last game i played with my kids actually there you go but like there's clank expansions that came out i never even touched and i'm like i love clank like why didn't i go pick up the curse of the mummy's tomb or whatever like the only one i have is sunken treasure right all right we're gonna move to the coffee shop but i have one more a uh, holiday tradition question I kind of wanted to ask, and I think this is mainly for the chat room, but do you have any holiday gaming traditions? Is there anything you do every year, this time of year from, well, we can go all the way back to Thanksgiving, especially for the Americans, because it wasn't so far away, uh, all the way to New Year's, to whatever whatever next is. Um, 
Is there anything after the New Year's? No, it's just New Year's Day, right? Like, there's yeah. no Boxing Day after New Year's. Nope. There's there's so it's uh, the Hangover Day. That's about it that <laughs> I know of. Which is New Year's Day, right? Yeah, it's Not, New Year's Day. Because it's New Year's Eve, you technically celebrate. Do you have any holiday gaming traditions? Um, one of our big ones that I we're still talking about it. I don't I don't know what we're doing is uh, gaming in the New Year which has also been one of Sean's traditions. One of the, heck, even when we weren't hanging out that often, we tended to see you at least once a year on New Year's. And we'd have a big, I don't even know, 24-hour, 36-hour gaming <laughs> event. It wasn't really planned. It tended to start whenever the first person showed up, and it ended whenever everyone fell asleep. So, yep. uh, so that was a big deal for a number of years. And became a big deal for a number of other people. And of course, that got ruined by COVID. And I feel bad. Like, there were people who were like, oh, please, are you having it this year? And I'm like, no, it's sorry. Um, I am immunocompromised and my mom is even worse. Like, she's she's in rough shape. So we didn't want to take the risk. Um, Deanna and I have talked about it this year. And we're definitely not doing a big party this year. But we might do something. We'll see. So that's one of my big ones is gaming in the years. Um, another one is we used to also do thanks gaming close to the American or the, the, the Thanksgiving, which was basically the same thing, but we didn't like provide alcohol and food like we do on New Year's. Like we'll put out cheese platters and cheese balls and that where Thanksgiving was just like, come over, we're playing games till people are sick of it. Right. And I get, you know, two, three tables going at once. Christmas Eve, we go to Brenda's house and we play games for years. That has been ticket to ride anniversary edition. The, the big shiny, like I actually have, I don't even love Ticket to Ride. Like I, it's okay, but like that edition looks so nice. Like even I appreciate it when it's out on the table. Plus it comes with the 1910 expansion, which I find greatly improves the game. So we tend to play that with the, the, the 1910 expansion and the nice big cards instead of the Hobbit cards and the shiny trains. And we have an annual game of that. And it's one my daughter, well, uh, one usually joins us as well. Um, I, does it play six or only five? I don't even remember now. Uh, I think I Genevieve's just usually, well, you know what? It's It's been a while, right? Because we didn't do New Year's the previous two years. I just, it wasn't safe to go out at that time of year or whatever. Or someone had symptoms or whatever it was. So Genevieve wasn't old enough to play before and sure is now. So I'm not right. even positive. So Will Chamberlain um, does uh, extended family Boxing Day games. Oh, that's cool. Boxing Day, we don't. I, what I've done the last few, this might be a new tradition, is I've done Unboxing Day, where I will go live on Twitch right here, and I'll open up the stuff I got for Christmas. <laughs> I've, I've done that a couple times. the time. only day that time they get played. Well, yeah. There is <laughs> well, that. yeah. That does happen. That does happen sometimes. Uh, Pax um, is saying one of the great things is that a new FLGS opened in their town. They got to buy local games for an exchange. Oh, nice. It's always nice. That is cool, especially if they're a store worth supporting. Uh, Pax says they'd love to do a New Year's gaming event. Don't typically go out, and that would be a nice way to spend the evening. And that was it, right? Like, uh, the other rule, well, at least personally, I I didn't tend to crack anything open alcoholic-wise until the kids were in bed, um, which often was at midnight. So, like, the drinking didn't start until, like, midnight. So anyone who wasn't interested in that aspect of New Year's could, like, feel like they got a full party out of it and leave without feeling like they missed out mm -hmm. which has gone really well because we tend to get a mix of people who enjoy their drink and people who don't and like they love the fact that like i got to be here till midnight and subway at midnight and i didn't have to deal with drunk people and then there's other people who are like it's midnight let's go and and no i didn't force that on other people some people started a little earlier but things didn't tend to get any sillier until after midnight and uh, at 4 the a.m they were really silly uh, yes <laughs> Yeah, it, it tended to get, well, part of the problem was you had the people who were saving it up, right? And then once it hit midnight, it tended to get <laughs> drank a little quicker than it probably should have. Yeah. Yes, and then out comes telestrations. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, we usually went until the sun came up and sometimes longer, like noon the next day. Yep. Um, what's, what was awesome is, again, um, because of COVID, like my kids were just starting to stay up with us. And it was awesome because, like, my daughter was teaching people how to play Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. And she taught, a, excuse me, and she taught a group to play Hogwarts Battle, which was really cool. And she was loving it. Yep. And, and then and, COVID. <laughs> and, yeah. So, like, it ruined all the fun. Oh, and we just lost a mo. Oh, we were back. Okay. You froze oh, for weird. a second there. Yeah. 
I finally have the 12 player party pack. Mm-hmm. And we have the 80s, 90s. See, we'd have 80s, 90s for New Year's Eve. 80s, 90s, 12 player. 12 player, 3 a.m. <laughs> illustrations. Oh, Telestration is still a great game. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'll do the unboxing day thing. What I'm not looking forward to, and uh, you target, there's a flipping sale starting on Christmas Day. Oh. And I'm like, uh, we may need to spend some time working because that's what pays the dang bills. I'm like, who launches a big board game sale on Christmas Day? That's crazy. So I don't know. We may just ignore it, but that's not very financially re- responsible to do that. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I know that's like, brutal. And what is that for all the people who didn't get what they wanted? Go shopping is that that's probably how I'll promote it. Didn't get what you wanted under the tree. Check out the, <laughs> I don't even know. Deanna told me what it was. It was like, whatever, $50 off or save 50% buy one, get one fifty. It was something like that. That's crazy. Well, anyway. All right, I could definitely use some coffee. I just finished mine, so I, right. I, I this was my timer. This was like a sand timer for our board game tonight. <laughs> I should start using that. <laughs> I don't know if that would work. No, I don't drink coffee regularly enough. <laughs> I've had a lot of coffee today, which is probably why I'm just like going. Let's come on, it's the holidays. There we go. You go there with that or ask. Go. I have ben, notes somewhere to say stuff here. Sean's gonna have to go with it because I think with I a closed couple them. Of fresh cups of coffee. There you go. Uh, So what I was thinking for the rest of the show that we've already been basically kind of doing this as we go along is let's answer some questions from the chat. Uh, It's an AMA, I guess, but you know what? More so than usual, I don't care if it's gaming related. I'm up for anything. Quick and easy questions best. I don't want to deep dive anything tonight. (laughs) I don't want a big philosophical debate over something. Sorry, Roger. Um, (laughs) I I don't I don't want to talk about whether we should host rule or not. I just want to talk about we could talk there. See, Roger, there is big philosophical question. I totally called that. You're you're lagged, so you probably haven't heard me say this yet, but I totally called it. I apologize to you for a reason. We'll do this. I'll, I'll talk about that. That one's not terrible. But yeah. but I'm just amused that there there is the big question we got from Roger. It's medium, medium sized. Size. Fair, fair. So can yeah, a let, game re- be too pretty is Roger's uh, question. Can the art detract from the gameplay? Uh, and the one game comes to mind being Preta Porter. Which you guys haven't played, or you have played yeah, once? Yeah, yeah. You have no, no, one. we played it, and I can see it. The art can be distracting. Um, the iconography, despite I'm pretty sure it's an Eno tool design, is not the best compared to some of his other stuff. And there's just too many. There's icons that are unneeded. Like it walks you through these four phases, and they show them on the edge, and it's just the board is very busy. Um, this happens a lot to me with card games. I complain about this with card games a lot. Part of it being because of my aging eyes, but a great example of it, sorry, Mark, is Aldabas. The art that is prominent on the cards is probably the least important aspect of what's on those cards. No, no, no Ian on Pret, by the way. What's that? No Ian on Pret Porter. No E. Ian. Oh, Ian. Oh, okay. It wasn't Ian. Oh, Ian O'Toole. Wow. I'm. The last time I was at an event, Ian was there and we were talking about how many copies of Predator Porter the place had and Roger picked up one and I picked up one. So my my <laughs> my neurodivergent brain was connecting it to the wrong Ian wrong there, Ian. even though yep. I know I just mentioned it. And no, I'm not diagnosed as that. But, you know, every time I see someone who's like, oh, AD and EH brains work this way. I'm like, yeah, that's how that, that works. <laughs> That's that's how we, we got to that. I'm like, Ian, Ian, yeah, well, I got Predator Porter off Ian. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, and so did Roger. Um, someone else that was at the uh, Cal, I think, that was at the event was talking about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, totally I, I, I haven't played Predator Porter, so I can't comment on that one. But absolutely on card games, it just gets to the point where there's you're just trying to you, you should be able to glance at your hand. And know what's going on. Yes. Not glance at your hand and spread the cards and flip back and forth and try and figure out what's going on. And I, I don't mean the, the text part. Like, yeah, there are games where the text makes you do that. But yeah. when you're just looking at the iconography on the card, you should be able to glance and go. Yeah. Um, Boba Majong, I showed you the other day. Yeah. Why are the suit symbols in the top corner like the smallest thing on the card? They're like this big. I now get that they're also color-coded. But if you have uh, an issue with colorblindness, I don't 
think I don't think those are colorblind friendly cards based on the colors they're using, like a pale green and a pale pink. I would red. guess not. I'm but guessing that's, that's gray and gray to some people. Yeah, um, I would have to. I would have and to then throw also it in the with list. card design, the wild card. You pointed it out that it only says it on one side of the card. Yeah, even the way the I was having it fully re reversible. Yeah, the way I had my cards split spread, I didn't know it was a wild card because the wild card was hidden on the bottom. Yeah, all the boss though is the biggest one. Like lately, I was I'm trying to teach this game, and all people focus on is the color of the door and the knocker that's on there. And yes, the knocker is an indication of what suit it is, but really the data you need is in the top corner and in the bottom for what the card does. The only reason the color on the door matters is you can't put matching colors together. That's the only rule you need to know. Yep. Why is the color of the door the most prominent thing? Now, I will admit with the expansion, there is a reason to collect colors of cards. So it matters a little bit more. But the core game, there's no reason for the most prominent thing on that card to be something that's a minor part of the game. Yep. No, absolutely. So, yes, it can definitely happen. Um even even we were playing Horizon Zero Dawn last weekend, which we could talk a bit about that if we want, but we got some good questions from the chat, so maybe we won't talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. Back there, in case we want to talk about it. Right there, this side. Um, I don't know if you noticed it, but like they really showcased the machine art. The little side, it's like in the top right corner of the card, has all the stats you need. Like how much damage it takes to knock it out and how much health it has and how much scrap it drops. Like for functionality, those would be huge, big numbers across the top of the card that I can see from across the table. Yep. But they really wanted to show you that monster. But then it's steam forged and their whole concept is beautiful looking games with beautiful miniatures. So I kind of get it. And I will admit it didn't detract from the game to me, but it just thinking about it in a design sense, like why it wasn't the important information bigger. Right. And then the card design of having a rule for a card on the back of the card. Remember we noticed that? I'm like, who does that? Yeah. Did it not fit? Like, just scoot everything up. Yes, you cover up some of the art, but scoot everything up. Yep. Uh, so they actually, um, they do appear, they do appear to actually be colorblind friendly. Um, okay, fair. I'm, 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 I'm a little running shocked. Running it through the tests. Yeah, yeah, I'm just running it through the, uh, the, the colorblind S simulator. So at, I guess uh, my next question is why even have the little tiny symbols? Yeah, yeah. Like, like if it's, if it's already clear from the rest of the card. I don't know. There's the, the, the you can learn a lot from the traditional deck of cards. Yes, like absolutely. The fact the the pips are the symbol for the suit. Moba Majon doesn't have that. It's cute little boba bubbles or whatever tofu balls, whatever they are. They're cats. In boba. I'm sorry, they're cats. <laughs> yeah, they they do look very feline. Um. So yeah, I, it can. You can definitely have art that detracts from a game. I don't know if I've ever played. Um, I, it can go the other way too. Actually, I I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people find the art in Terraforming Mars distracting. They 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 focus too much on looking at that art and how the art doesn't match in the cards. And like personally, I I've never had a problem with the art in those game that game at all. My complaint with that game is the um, thickness of some of the player boards and stuff like that. There there are other quality issues I wish were better in that game, especially at the price point, because it's all just a whole bunch of cards, a board, and then some not so expensive components for a big price. Now, I will say I've gotten my money's worth out of that game, so I can't complain. Like, I played that more than most games in my collection, so I fully feel justified in how much I paid for that game, but there are a lot of people who fixate on the art and how it distracts them. I haven't had that problem, but the fact people have complained about it means it does happen yeah no i i get it stock art games are problematic especially when you're spending big money for mm -hmm. a stock art game um I, I haven't found it as a problem on on terraforming mars in particular because i think the game stands up i think yeah. the game is strong enough to overcome that weak art but there are other games out there that i have seen where it's like no i can't I, I cannot get behind this game because you have gone to and used really cheap stock art. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, definitely. I, art, I hate to say it. Like, honestly, like being a hobby board gamer that owns lots of flipping games, I should be able to say that mechanics trump everything, but it's not true. Like, like art and design and card design can totally make or break a game. 
Like, I, I wish you could be like, nope, game's great. Doesn't matter what it looks like. That's not true. <laughs> like, you look at some re-themes, and that's definitely a thing as well. Um, it, it just, uh, it, it makes a big difference. That some games look so good that you enjoy them, even if they they stink, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't go that bad. Like, like mechanics, obviously, mechanisms, obviously matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But art has more of an impact than I think a lot of people are willing to admit. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, the fact of the matter is uh, it starts at the box. You know, if your box, oh, yeah. if your box isn't going to get picked off a shelf, you've got a first problem. Now it's a little different now because of shows like this and Amazon True. where you're not necessarily seeing it. But if you are, you know, going to your local FLGS to see what games are there, you are going to skip over some games because of the box. Mm -hmm. um, it, it matters. Um, you, you've got to have, you've got to stand out. Uh, and it's cause not all, you know, again, 5,000 games put it coming out a year. You aren't always going to stand out. You aren't mm -hmm. always going to get on all the shows. You aren't going to get on dice tower on tabletop bellhop on whatever your favorite show is, um, to, to get the attention drawn to you. Sometimes shelf space is the only option you'll have. Mm -hmm. Nope. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Without this becoming our only topic tonight, <laughs> let's move on to snail runs. What was the first board game you played that broke the all licensed board game suck rule? Uh, that's happened to me a long time ago. That would be the Willow game from 1988, which I still have downstairs. It is a fantastic movie tie in game where you play one or more of the characters from the movie. Your characters can be good or evil. If you're good, you have to try to keep the baby safe out of Bab Morda's clutches. If you're evil, you're trying to find the baby, capture her and bring her to Nakmar Castle. Um, one of the good characters starts with the baby, but the evil players don't know who. So you've got that whole deduction going on with moving around a map with encounter cards. Honestly, this is one we should break out again and see if it's still as good as I remember. But yeah, the Willow game, it was back in my talisman days. I picked it up because it was in the same size box and next to talisman on the shelf at Leisure World. And I ended up really enjoying it. Still downstairs. It was published by Tor Books, the sci-fi and fantasy book publisher. Yeah, I honestly, I could not, I don't think I could answer that one because um, I'm sure it's going way, way back somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I'd have a hard time. I'd have a hard time actually giving a solid answer to that one. So the designer of this game, this I wouldn't have known back in the day, uh, looks like they're really into war games. So their most well-known games are Pax Britannica, Swords and Sorcery, Quest and Conquest in the, I'd have to click it. Click it. And this amazes me. You remember Crash Crumble and Chomp, the the video game? Yeah, yeah. That is based on the board game, The Creature That Ate Sheboygan. Yeah. It's by this designer. Oh. So the Willow designer designed The Creature That Ate Sheboygan, and he also designed the Star Trek Adventure game, which was one of the early FASA RPG tie-ins. Oh. Like, they, like a web and starship. He has 23 games to it. Um, Greg Kostokian. Alternate name designer X. <laughs> What's interesting is there were actually two Willow games that came out in 1988. Yeah, this is this this is the bookshelf game version, yeah. as we used to call them. The bookshelf game. As opposed to the as opposed to the coffin box. The, the coffin box, right? The 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 roll and move monopoly-ish game. Yeah. So yeah, uh Which probably how wouldn't it... have changed our minds about licensed games. No, probably <laughs> not. Um, so this is actually ranked 16,295 on Board Game Geek and only has a rating of 5.8. But in 1988, I thought it was groundbreaking. Fair. Like, like, like you had fair. you had well, the whole fact that you have different players are doing something different. Well, the fact rare. that this is a 1988 game with a weight of two. Yeah. I mean, that that alone yeah. is uh even like I said, the fact that people have different roles, right? The fact that almost every board game that came out before that, you, you were all working towards the same goal, whether it yep. was solve the murder, yeah, bankrupt everyone else, get to the end of the track, end up with the most money at the end. There wasn't the asymmetry. Here you have a, there you go. Maybe my love of asymmetry started in 1988 <laughs> with Willow. There you go. Uh, you have an asymmetric game right there. Two hour play time too. Like, like 120 minutes is the estimated playing time. Like, you just didn't get big games. Like, it was one of those games that made it feel like, oh, I'm playing an adult game. Yep. 
Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Ryan, 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 Meeple Ryan saying the Buffy board game is a cult classic and apparently I've better heard good than things. you think. And Darkling Blight is saying we have a copy of Beowulf the movie board game. That one's a good. A movie tie-in that took an existing game and expanded it. Been years oh. since they played it, but they remember it being entertaining. Okay, so that's the one. There are two Beowulf board games. That is the one that is an improvement on Kingdoms, which is a Rainer Nitzia Fantasy Flight Silverline game that you play the same board every time, whereas Beowulf changed it up. So you have three different boards. So it progresses from an easy board to a difficult board. And it had absolutely nothing to do with Beowulf, which was ridiculous, but it is a way better version of Kingdoms. What I like is there was another Beowulf game that was a competitive one that was fantastic where you were going through the actual journey and having to like spend resources. And it was based on one of the, what, what's credited as one of the first cooperative board games, which was the original Lord of the Rings board game. And it's based on that mechanism, but it was better than Lord of the Rings. Now, I will admit, I did eventually sell that one. I do still have the Kingdoms version downstairs. Now I'm going to see which. I'm guessing Beowulf the movie is probably. Yeah, Beowulf the movie board game is the is Kingdoms. The kingdoms. What's the other one? That's what I'm oh, trying to find. There's a bunch. Like, there's a lot of different Beowulf. Beowulf the Legend? Let me see. Let me see the game. Yeah, Beowulf the Legend. Is is the other one that actually came out before it, where you're you're traversing down a path, having to spend resources to progress. Anyone who's played the Lord of the Rings cooperative game, it's this. Like it, this okay. is an improved version on it, in my opinion. It doesn't say re-implements, but like I think there's a logical progression here. Right. I, again, they're both Nizia, but you, it, every Nizia game, there's math involved. <laughs> yes, yeah, they're not at least sucks. not trying to play cards in numeric order in this one. Well, there you go. So it's not like all those games. Uh, there, there are, uh, there, there have been. You know what? Like even back in the day, there was that Jedi Sarlacc's Pit game that had the three D skiff. Yep. And you rolled to move, and you pushed the um. Oh my god, I can't remember. Gamorians. There we go. I was gonna <laughs> have to give up my Star Wars cred for a minute there. You'd actually push the Gamorians off and they'd fall into the Starlock Starlock pit. You just I I quickly learned you don't buy those long thin boxes. Yep. Anything that wasn't in a long thin box tended to be pretty good. And so, so Star Wars Return of the Jedi Battle at Sarlacc's Pit. Yes. 1983, although it's rated a 5.1 right now. <laughs> uh that's 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 only one below Willow. <laughs> But back in the day, that was a great game. Like, I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'd still enjoy it. I wish I still had it, but it, it ended up getting damaged. It got water damaged in our basement, and it, you needed the, the the cardboard. It was one of those. Back in the day then, that was when, like, you could get the um, uh, Bespin playset and the Sandcrawler playset and all that stuff that was cardboard, right. which is all worth a fortune now because the cardboard got wet or yeah, got every, everyone moist had or theirs everyone damaged. lost theirs, right? And that was that time period, and that's when that game was one that picked. Because my, my parents made me keep all my toys in the basement, and it was not a finished basement. It was this wooden shelving my grandfather had made, and depending on where things were, how close they were to the window and stuff, stuff didn't always last. Yep. Whereas all of my stuff that my mom got uh, gotten kept for me ended up getting like moldy. It was that it was that mildew? Oh, the that mildew me was the yep, yep, yep. All right. So I saw Deanna was talking about this. She was thinking Battlestar Galactica. That was definitely one that 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 was a great example of a fantastic licensed game. That the most interesting one for me for that was Alex Belden taught us that at the Knights of Columbus back when I was like first started the WGR. And I don't know what happened to Alex. I hope you're still out there somewhere still gaming because Alex was awesome. Uh, really great game teacher. Really enjoyed hanging out with him. But neither Deanna or I had seen the modern series. Mm. We had seen the original. I love the original. I still love the original. That's still some of my favorite TV. I have the complete series downstairs. I love the original. Um, though it kind of falls apart near the end, especially <laughs> when you get to Battlestar 1984. But well, I love the to original. Be fair, the new one kind of falls apart at the end, too. But in a very different way, though, <laughs> very different way. Um, and we played it and I'm like, this is great, but I have no idea what all this is or who this is. And honestly, the best part about that is it didn't break because of that, because no one tried to play the characters because no one knew who they were, which is, again, I'm, I'm not going to rant about it. I ranted about it on Twitter <laughs> a couple weeks back and got lots of interaction. I, I no longer play that game because it's broken too many times. I'm like, I need a two hour prep to play the game so we don't mess it up. 
Uh, and then Deanna's mentioning Labyrinth, which proves it's not just that we've moved into a paradise where licensed games are now inherently good. Oh, my God, that game was so bad. Like, I thought it would have some redeeming factor. And then I read the rules, and I'm like, hey, there's skill checks with different sized dice. It's almost like Savage World. No, it was just terrible. And the fact that when I opened it, the board split in two. Like, like all I did was open it. Like, I opened the box, and the board was in two pieces. Miniatures are still awesome. Yep. game was terrible like absolutely terrible um ryan's asking sons of anarchy any good as a licensed game yes actually it's fantastic um the problem is the theme i can't sell anyone on that theme like like you were playing bikers running drugs and guns like that's the theme of the game although to be fair are you... there are a ton of like facebook games and mobile game oh yeah games where you're there, doing there, that so there, there are a lot but it's it's not the kind of thing i felt comfortable playing at public play events mm. I, it just, you know, and like literally you have little plastic guns and, and briefcases that you hand mm. to each other. Like it it really plays up the theme. Right. Uh, at the time, I hadn't seen the series. I actually really enjoyed the series once I sat down and watched it. Kate Bullock was the one that recommended that like as a, hey, you should actually watch this as a, a great show showing off masculinity and a more positive light than you usually see and actually diving a little deeper than or, we're bikers. And I gotta say the series was good, but I played the game long before that. Now they did retheme it to Dungeons and Dragons. I never tried that, but I'm assuming it's good. Um, something Vault D and D Vault. I'm gonna see if I can figure this out. Vault of the Dragon. Oh, or did they put the and instead? They probably did because it's flipping D and D. I'm trying to find it, and it's not coming up. I thought it was Vault of the Vault Dragon. of Dragons. Uh, yeah, Vault of Dragons. That's the retheme? Yeah, Vault of Dragons. There you go. See? Got it. D&D Vault of Dragons. That's why I'm the bellhop. I don't know why I remember all this garbage. I, I just went to Sons of Anarchy and looked for the re re There you go. Buy. That works. <laughs> yeah, see, it's like a 6.6. .6. It's a weight 233. You get different locations. You're, it's, it's, it's a resource management game where, you know, you're going here to trade this for this resource. Then you go here to trade this for this. Except in D&D, it's like go to the tavern and get beer instead of go to the whorehouse and get drugs that you traded your guns for and like, it is water deep yeah yeah uh, and, and like i said the original is good so oh, I, and it was too it's water deep and under mountain yeah like i said it, it was surprisingly good um there were some auction mechanics where you did the blind bid where you like you know you hold your fist out to see how much money you bid and you show it like it, it was a solid game it it was surprisingly good um and it was dirt cheap for a very long time like five bucks on amazon which is why i eventually tried it and like that, I also at the same time tried Homeland, the game, which was also really good. And I don't really love social deduction, hidden trader games. Battlestar Galactica being the exception uh, that proves the rule. But I love that one because it had three factions. So there was like the terrorists that were trying to make everything terrible. And then there was the Homeland Security who was trying to defend the U.S. But in between was the media. And while the media was all about buzz. So they wanted some terrorist things to go through. So they had stuff to talk about, but they didn't want too many to go through that the U S got ruined. And I just thought that was fascinating. Right. I, and I have no idea how it tied to the show. Um, it used a similar mechanic to Battlestar Galactica playing cards, but then it had the most fiddly stack of cards with these cards with corners cut out. You had to lay perfectly over other cards. So you yeah. can see the threat numbers and it was just too fiddly. And I'm like, I, I I'm almost want like a digital version. Like give me a, give me a Microsoft surface to play this on. Because <laughs> it wouldn't work on like board game arena because it's a, like social deduction, right? Hidden trader. Yes, you can play those on board game arena. I just don't enjoy it. I'm like, heck, it's bad enough. But it's social deduction game. But now I can't even try to bluff you because I'm going to bluff you in chat. It's not my thing. Yep. But yeah. Sons of Anarchy was good. Uh, Sons of Anarchy was surprisingly good. Um, I've heard the Godfather was good. I haven't played that one. There's a lot of Godfather games, so I'm not sure. I'm assuming he's talking about the cool mini or not one, but I'm not positive. The Spin Master has a 2022 one uh, out. Yeah, that one I don't know. Isn't Godfather coming back? Isn't there like a new Godfather movie coming or something? Oh, I thought I, I saw that. I don't know. I think that license is getting rebooted somehow. Well, probably. Monopoly, the Godfather Collector's Edition. Yeah, I'm sure. Of course. The oh, Godfather of course. trivia game. I have not tried the cool mini or not. I do have nothing personal, which felt like a Godfather game. So Godfather Corleone's Empire was the Simon. Yeah, that's one. the. It's supposed to be really good, but See, it looks like they overproduced five. it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be pretty good. Wait, wait, two plus two point six four. 
supposedly it's got some ties to like Blood Rage style of games. So I don't know. I know it's over the oh, top. Ryan's saying the God for the game he picked up is a few years old. Used dice and meeples on a track. Oh, meeples on a That's track. That's definitely then, not no. going to be Simon then. No, I'm not sure then. Sure, that wasn't nothing personal. Mm, square boxes is, is the Simon one, but uh... I think nothing personal had meeples. It very much feels like a Godfather game. Mm. It was uh, designed by Tom Vassell. It was the one game he published, and then decided he would never publish a game again. Well, it could be uh, Godfather A New Dawn 2016 from IDW. Oh, IDW. Sorry, IDW, but you are part of the reason people think licensed games aren't great. <laughs> um, did not love your Walking Dead games. Yeah, I'm seeing um, people. I'm seeing a track. This is almost okay. certainly the one. It's a square box. The Godfather A New Dawn by IDW rated a 6.5 with a weight of 2.0. Which isn't terrible. To be honest, that's about an IDW weight. Yeah, IDW I, I, is would be TMNT. That's they've got the license. That's the one that game was okay, but it needed more. Like I, I, it's one of those games we've got the retail version. I mean, if we had backed the Kickstarter, I probably would have liked it. Fair. Like you have four scenarios where you're just like fighting Foot Clan in an alley, and then you eventually fight. I think it was Bebop. It was only one of the two, <laughs> and that's the whole box. Oh, wow. And like there was an expansion pack where you could get April, but all it let you do is swap a turtle out for April. And there was an expansion box where you could get Splinter. Now, I know they put out more games after they put out a follow up. It had a fantastic dice mechanic and had one of the best cooperative things where you made a, a, a string of dice for your actions and the dice on the far left, your player on the left got to use and the dice on your far right on the other side. <laughs> which was just really cool city. How dare uh, they? it was something like that um it wasn't yeah it wasn't well managed is what ryan's saying premium pricing on the retail follow-up games yeah it wasn't cheap i don't remember if i kept that i honestly don't i might still be downstairs I, we there there's something i want from from our listeners for the new year make a list of games i need to show sean so he has like the uh the background of oh yeah, like the last time, he, well, last time he was down, last Sean Con when we were like played Dominion, you know, get get some of those classics in. No, it's true. Like the, the dice sharing mechanism was fantastic. I I thought that was really cool. Like that that made it feel like turtles, right? It was like, hey, take my whatever, you know, use my wheels. Yep. I don't know, Sean. Have you played Carcassonne? Uh, digitally, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like at least digitally, but I think he played that back. You know. Yeah, AFC yeah. events and stuff. Uh, Caverna has just come out on BGA. Yep. We need to we need to play Power Grid with Sean at some point, but I got to relearn the rules. And I'll play it. I'll be like, oh, my God, this game's amazing. I remember why it was my favorite game. We need to play more often. And then we won't. And, and, then, and then we and then and then you and D can play. And because I'm seven years. But yeah, that's one. That's one where I, I know I should play it. But I also have a strong feeling that it's just not my type of thing. We'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm not a fan of, of auctions. You're a fan of auctions. I'm not a fan of auctions. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Auctions only part of it. Oh, there we There's go. D, going D, on D, in wants, that game. D wants to uh, wants me to play wants to play Caverna so we she can get our ELO rating high enough to enter tournaments. Yes, that is what Deanna does now. Deanna now like kicks people's butts on tournaments and BGA. Oh. I, I, we've been told never to play Castles of Burgundy against her again, and I thought, <laughs> we were already losing pretty regularly against her. So yep. I don't think we need to. Didn't Sean Hamilton was the challenge, if I remember correctly? Sean tended to the, win. Him and D were the ones that were kicking the most butt there. Uh, there was a patch where I was doing really well, but then I think other people figured out my strategy or something. So again, TMNT I is that. actually rated eight point three. Yeah, but I think that's with all the stuff. Like, I think it's just not the retail mm. ones. Oh, yeah, you're down top 200 on castles. Oh. They'll probably way better than us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is probably an answer for tech that he hasn't asked. Yes, I still have a ton of games to sell. Like, I've been talking about it since, what, January? Gotta happen <laughs> at some Slacker. point. 30 games simultaneously to earn a badge. That's a wow. See, that's... that's. Right, Sean didn't get that one at one point. Uh, oh, the new the game today is Tinner's Trail. Oh, I've heard of that. that's good. That's that's a modern one. I've heard good things. I'm trying to see what all the games. So, uh, what else has come out recently? Did we miss anything from the chat? If you did, please repeat it. 
Uh, I don't. I, I, I'm just looking to see if we missed any other questions. A bunch yeah, of stuff came seeing, in. So. Do we have any other questions? If, if not, we'll probably call it at 11:30. Well, speaking of, thinking, uh, of kingdoms, kingdoms came on out on BGA um, this week. Oh, see, I like kingdoms. Kingdoms actually, it, it, it's it's Nizia. It's math. It's you're building a grid of numbers. And then adding them up and subtracting them to see who gets points. Like right. it's where you put your castle and your castles can be multipliers. So it's literally you're going to add the row and the column and multiply it by the castle level to get your points. And everyone's drafting tiles. And of course, there's negatives and stuff. And you can put like a mountain to block off a castle. But it's really good. Like I, I for what it is, it's really good. No, um, I have not played Last Will. Uh, let's see what else we got. We had Dinner in Paris came out this month on BGA. Don't know that one at, uh, at all. Worldwide Tennis. My first Last will, my first castle panic. Mm. Uh, true, see that there's something Sean needs to play uh, Star Trek panic because I need to play it again. There you go. Knowing art, that it's a much more epic game, we thought it was going to be light and silly, and it's not. Uh, art thief, it's a lot of Caf games for one week. No, this is the month. This is their, their oh, the month. games okay. of December. Uh, Cat Cafe, Ikonos, Draft Cider, Sekatsu, Cracking Up. Tic Tac Match, Tiny Farms, Obsession, Chicago Express, Look at the Stars, Lifeline, Reflection, which wow. is uh, um, like uh, laser chess, um, oh. Hydro Racers, and La Marche du Crab. Hey then. So no, last one I have not played. Uh, Roger was asking about that. It's a Vladimir Suchi game. Um, it reminded me way too much of the Brewster's Million board game that I'm forgetting the name of. So it didn't really catch my eye because I love that other game. Um, Will Chamberlain would know what I'm talking about. I, I'm pretty sure I played his copy. Uh, what was that game called? We always just called it Brewster's Million, the board game. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I'm amused by Nizia has the driest games, but he has his fans. Wow. You know what, though? I like a good uh, two-player abstract strategy. And yes, you can play Kingdoms more, but it, it's really solid two-player. It's got that test like feel of outmaneuvering your opponent. I do enjoy those. Right. Uh, I, I, I am not a huge fanboy, but... Interesting. Uh, a, a bug fix on BGA for Space Base... Uh, one of the cards, Glenn 1817-C, was incorrectly configured to require two cubes in four and five player games, and nobody commented and told anyone, because it should mm -hmm. require four cubes, of course, for the right. four and five player games. No one no one reported the uh, two cube discount on that card. Okay, everyone's saying Last Will is the Brewster's Millions board game, but I swear there was one or older than that. Like on Check Games Edition, it says the Brewster's Millions board game. Oh, what is that game called? Maybe it is Last Will. Maybe I have played it. Last Will was 2011. I mean, it goes back quite a ways. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the one. Yeah. I don't know. All right. There's so a 2016 version, too. I'm a little confused. Maybe it was last will. I'm trying to find like, is there old covers? Cause that cover, I don't recognize at all. Yeah, and I don't I recognize these little that. top hats. Uh, look at the version. Oh, um, <laughs> oh, no, they all seem to have the same box cover. Except for the Chinese. Maybe edition. it was last will. Maybe I played it. <laughs> it played some <laughs> game where you're like, I buy a fancy car and the whole thing is whoever can spend their inheritance first and it was actually a really really good game yeah this might be it I, I, I guess i have played it so before we wrap up get a few minutes left here no more questions coming in but uh with horizon zero dawn in the background there we have played now one partial mm -hmm. game uh, i i have to say it's solid it's yeah there are some problems understanding the curve on it is brutal the learning yeah. curve is it really is an epic game sharp. with a lot going on but a lot it's a good game yeah um yeah it's it's really solid we we played extreme we, we you know we had our we had our <laughs> problems because again the, the rule book isn't great it's all there but it's not all that well there. laid out i have played this because i played the old cover i found the old cover sorry uh, okay here i'm going to share this quick just now that i see this i have played this game the prodigal's club 
So okay. it, 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 it is not quite the same game. And it doesn't even list it as a retheme. Hmm. So I'm a little confused. So the Prodigal right, Club is 2015. Well, maybe I played Last Will and not Prodigal's Club. Lose now votes, I'm your friends and possessions in this game of reverse expectations. Oh, you know what I should do? There's a flipping log play. Oh, I have not go. played the Prodigal's Club. Let <laughs> me check last. I'm on board, Game Geek. Come on. How did I not think to look at my plays? But oh, yeah. Yes, I have played Last Will. I like Last Will. Last Will's really good. It's Brewster's Millions, the board game. There Sorry, Roger. Yes, I don't own it, though. Will yeah, Chamberlain so, did. I don't know if he still does. Horizon Dawn, great game. Is it overpriced? It possibly. Uh, yeah. It's a very expensive game because of the miniatures, and the miniatures are great. No, mm -hmm. no argument there. The miniatures are great, but you're paying a lot for them, and whether or not the game is worth at full price, I, yeah. I'm not yet ready to say. But... Did I, I? I have never played Horizon Zero Dawn. I have no you idea. You didn't even know what the about. premise was. I know nothing I, I about had to give the game. The yeah. I know nothing about the, the game world. at all. But it is a fun game. It's interesting. It's it's you know that it's that you know co competitive competitive yeah. <laughs> competitive game. Um, and and it's it's thinky. I mean, there were there were some real puzzles to the game. Yeah, it's still, I, I want to retry that one mission just to, which, <laughs> which is what I'm worried about. That is the one thing I'm definitely concerned about with this game. The core retail box has one hunt only. Now, the tertiary hunts on leading up to it will vary, but even those, you could end up playing the same ones over and over. Yeah, the replayability, again, I'm, this, I'm that, goes towards, that, that goes towards my concern about the price. Again, mm -hmm. good game. I don't know about the price, though. So... Oh, that's cool. Oh, well. Awesome. You might have to look into that. Congrats, Tech One Congrats, Shirt tech. is telling us about some software to use for streams. Because we're not actual streamers. We no, just are here not. on Twitch. We, we don't actually know what we're record. doing. <laughs> yes, we don't actually know what we're doing. Which is why like we don't have any bits going back and forth or any yep. of that stuff. Though if you're willing, if you have them, feel free to share. <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than that, so, yeah, I Horizon Zero Dawn, I I I way better than I thought. I was expecting otherwise uh, i i don't want to knock the publisher who sent us a game but i have heard from other reviewers yep. that, that their games were more flash and more flair than substance and to me that's not the case with this game this seems solid yeah i already though regret not having all the stuff like the full kickstarter and i honestly think this is a game that if you kickstarted it you're probably going to be pretty happy and if you didn't you might want to wait for some sales Yep, yeah, absolutely. I, I I completely agree. Again, without knowing anything about Horizon Zero Dawn, it was fun. It was enjoyable. It was uh, it was engaging, mm -hmm. um, and it looked great on top of that. So yeah. you know, having not shelled out the money for it, I really yeah. enjoyed it. <laughs> exactly. I, if I would, I have regrets if I had paid as much as you know retail price for that game. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. 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 But I, we we haven't even finished a game, so. Yeah. We, we have played three-fifths of one game. Well, we played three-fifths, and we played them almost all extreme. Yeah. So... I think by the end of the third game, we were playing properly. I think. Yeah. yeah. I didn't notice any additional errors when I was, like, looking at FAQs and rules and BGG after the fact. But, I mean, I Ryan talked about down. rule books earlier, and this this one is... Uh, the problem is it's, it's kind of almost a, the story, like the rule book reads like a story and that mm -hmm. means they mentioned something early on and don't mention it again and so there's a lot of page flipping mm -hmm. to find stuff uh again the rule they're in there it's not like they missed things in the rule book but as a reader you miss things <laughs> to try and find yeah. them so many little things yeah like what kept happening is we were looking up the rule for one thing and i glance at something else and i'd be like oh shoot <laughs> Wait, were we supposed to? And then like, oh, that makes this piece of equipment make sense now. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like that happened a lot. No, it's yeah. neat though. Like, like it, it did give me the feel of an aspect of the video game. It does it is sorely lacking in the story and exploration of the game, which is a huge part of the video game. You don't get any of that. And you don't get any of the interactions because it's one of those games where there's multiple endings and people keep track of what you've done earlier in the game. And they'll all that's gone. All it is is a hunt. But it does a really good job of feeling like a hunt. Yep. 
Deanna's got something to say about it. So the add-ons. Looks like some of those add-on, yeah, are from the game. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's uh, one so, expansion that everyone seems to say uh, is a must, and I'm trying to. Yeah, it's the one that adds uh, the barbarians. Basically, it adds other humans for you to fight, not just the machines. Uh, and it's yeah. No, uh, there's that one, but there's something else. It was uh, shoot. Uh, da, 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 expansion. Pull up my expansions. Uh, ever not lost? heard of the Nora Sacred Land? Yes, Sacred Lands. The Sacred Land is the one that everyone was saying was the must. Um, yeah, and, that's that's the one that that. Oh no, that only no. adds in more beasts. But it's that's it's, the one with more map tiles. It's the one with more map tiles. Uh, it's a, it's a bunch more anim, uh, creatures, tiles, tokens, tar, cards, and components. Two more characters. But it gives it gives you the extra maps, and that's the only other one that gives you maps that that we could find. I gotta say, like the ratings on Board Game Geek are like eights, so yeah. I, I don't think it's terrible. No, yeah, it's an eight with a, like expansions. Well, the that expansion's an eight one, and her, and the base game's only a seven. So, <laughs> well, it's again Kickstarter bias. The, I was trying to find the term for that because it's not sunk cost fallacy, but the the finding more worth in something you paid for personally, especially if it cost a lot, where you're just like you're going to forgive things you wouldn't in a in a cheaper game like there's got to be some logical fallacy that fits that and i was listening to um oh everyday board games podcast i happened to join their live stream the other day and they were talking about that how how they have a feeling that some of these big kickstarter game wonderland's war is what they were talking about and they're like it's a little simple and there's this and this and i i think a lot of people giving it those high ratings are the trying to justify their own purchase they're like well, yeah, look, it's an 8.7. I gave it a 10. Of course, I feel happy about spending my $500. It's interesting that the, the people re- uh, rating this ones and twos, like the base game ones and twos. Oh, it's probably for Kickstarter or Steamforge issues. It's like, issues yeah, we hate or... Steamforge, and they didn't communicate yeah. properly with us about this. And I'm like, I don't, it's. I said there there is, okay, so there are also other maps. So if you look at Lawless Badlands, also comes with maps. Okay. So I don't kick, when we were looking through the Kickstarter, we couldn't find any others. Yeah, I know. That was the Kickstarter. Lawless Badlands gives you the barbarian camp to invade, which is a big part of the game. But again, I don't think you get the social interaction. I'm sure it's just the combat of sneaking okay. into a barbarian camp and trying to accomplish a goal before they sent off the alarm, because that's a big part of the game is don't get spotted. Right. But yeah, I, I, I'm impressed. Like, we haven't finished the full game. I was not expecting the game to be so epic. Like, like it says an hour playtime, and I think that's an hour per hunt, and you have to do five, so it's like a five-hour game. I don't even know. We had one quick one, but then we realized we were playing on the wrong side of the board and did the one- to two-player map instead of the four-player four, four right. player map. So, so it should have been another 15. It probably you know, should it have been 15, longer. It probably should have been 25. Right. Yeah, that one looks good. Boba Majan, we're probably going to... Yeah, it's not sunk cost, because sunk cost is you've already wasted time on something, so you persist. But I don't think money, like, it would apply with that. Yeah, cash over time. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. When I read, read sunk cost, it didn't quite get across what I was thinking. Under promise, over deliver. Yeah, there's that. Or it's the other way around. It's, it's <laughs> over promise, under deliver. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 yeah, the endowment effect. I've heard that one. People that overvalue what they have in front of them versus what they don't. This I don't know. It's different. Like it's not. It, it I'm gonna like this because I spent money on it. Is more sunk cost, whereas it's like just this. You're trying to justify your own purchase by enjoying it more than you actually are. Like, yeah, like, the endowment effect describes a circumstance in which an individual places a higher value on an object that they already own than the value they would place on the same object if they didn't own it. Yeah, but that's like a part of it, right? Maybe it's just a bunch of these combined. Yeah. Anyway, I said we weren't going to get philosophical, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sunk and sunk endowment fallacy. There you go. There you go. That's, that that sounds like it's... All right. Well, I think we have had an awesome show tonight. (laughs) Sunken endowments. Thanks, everyone, for coming out before we uh, descend too far down. Happy holidays to all of our viewers, our listeners, our supporters. We do want to do one more thing tonight before we go. We are going to hop over to our.
One thing we don't want to miss tonight is thanking our VIP guests, our awesome Patreon backers. So in the spirit of the season, I think we'll do the full list, starting with... Brian Van Beek. Thank you, Brian. Diane Tuzano. Thanks always, Mom. The Misdirected Mark Podcast. Thank you. Evil John. Haven't heard from you in a while. I hope things are going well, and thank you. Donna, always great to see you in chat. I know you're already gone. Valentine Pache, or Pache, we never actually got a full proper pronunciation. Pache, I don't know, I, I think you said pastiche, I don't know. Valentine, whatever, however you pronounce it, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mechanical Muse, thanks. Did I take all the hard ones? Ron F. from Ron Talks Tabletop, thank you. Roger Malash of Roger Dodger Games, thank you. And that's R-O-G-E-R-D-O-G-E-R if you want to look up Roger's work in game design. Kevin Reno, thank you, Tech. Brian Sheehan, thanks, Brian. David Miller Jr., I hope your trip is going well. He was currently commuting and thought he might be able to join in on the commute, but I haven't seen him in the chat, so thank you. Brian Kurtz, thanks, Brian, for all your support over the years. Jeff and Sheila Seuss, who I'm sure can't be here because they're still dealing with a very young babe. Thank you. Kat and Tori, congratulations. And thank you. William Fisher, thank you. Danielle and Owen Thomas, thanks to both of you. Sean P. Kelly, thank you, Sean. Derek Hisson, thanks, Derek. And thank you, Andrew Dacey. Well, that was the double bell. Oh, that means the party's coming to an end and they're going to kick us out of the community room. Though we're closing things up, you can always find us at tabletopbellhop.com. All over the web is tabletopbellhop, uh, one word, and on your podcatcher of choice. If you dig what we've been doing, it'd be awesome if you stopped by our Patreon and dropped off a present by tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Well, that wraps up the time we have for the show tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Mo. Thank you. Happy Happy holidays holidays and and game game on. on.